stuff. Um, <laughs> yes. the, the CRM stuff. I'm super excited, but I'm, I'm very, you know, lost in, in terms of that. Well, stuff. it is very nice to hear somebody getting excited about a CRM system. So. <laughs> well, in my, you know, years of uh, building startups, trust me, I've built probably like 10 CRMs. At yeah. Least. And I've told entrepreneurs not to build CRMs probably more than like 200 times. So I, I totally understand the, the nature of, of uh, the thing in place. And I, I would love for, for you to give me like an intro in, into what we currently have and what we can have. Well, and yeah, this was an interesting challenge for me as well because I like to set up things from scratch and, you know, make sure that from the start, everything is kind of in place and can grow from there and is well documented. And so coming into, into this where so much exists already was an interesting challenge, although not an unusual one. I worked for a couple of universities and it was pretty much the same challenge where even within universities, they're saying, we have no idea what all these people are working on, what their research areas are. We just cannot get them to fill out their profiles. And we have these companies asking for researchers and we literally have no insights. Oh, wow. So that's where, that? that's where your superpowers come from. The, the thing that we call in Corona Y a war chest, you know, something <laughs> that you bring, bring with you to Corona Y. Well, it, it isn't, yeah, weirdly not, not the first time I'm attempting to solve this issue. And I can't say that I've fully achieved it before, but um, it's, it's kind of different here. And it's certainly nice to just be able to go about and set something up and try it out. And, yeah. See if it's useful or not. Yeah. So um, let me quickly share my screen so we can see that. Cool. So I also figured out what the issue was that you had yesterday um that scared me for a moment but i think because i uh, you you have an admin account you can see everything but you didn't actually see the same views that the people who are using the system are supposed to see mm. um so anyway when you log in you will have seen this there's a dashboard that you can set up for yourself uh, you also see it has this lovely not very well designed interface. We decided for Vitalik, I mean, Slava's recommendation to use it, it's open source. It was already set up on the infrastructure. It was a pragmatic approach. Yeah. Um, I'm sure things like Airtable have uh, a lot more convenient way of using features, but also are not as flexible in terms of their functionality and the setup and also might not forever be free. So um, yep. I'm sure there's, better CRMs for many of the aspects we're trying to do here, but it is super big and powerful and has all your classic sales funnel stuff, none of which I have looked into at all, but uh, which is, is all in here. And um, the area we've been focusing on so far has been exclusively the people part and getting the details of people into, into there. Um, and one of the main concerns was to make sure that we're uh, protecting personal details that people have provided when they signed up um, and only use information uh, that is already accessible on Slack. Um, I mean, as an admin user, yes, you can see the personal details, but there's different levels of, of access. And if I am signed in to the system as a project lead role, which I am right now, then I should not be seeing any personal data of people. So we have different lists, which is different views of the overall list of people. And the really the main one is this anonymized roster, um, which we've set up so that we can easily search for people with specific skills. Um, and so there are a lot of different, different drop downs here with um, all these things that are coming out of the taxonomy that uh, was developed. So this is when I started, I picked this up from Daniel. I know lots of people contributed to, to that previously. The taxonomy is built from all the skills that people have set in their registration. So it's kind of like a self selected taxonomy that is Makes sense. incomplete and will always be incomplete. 
um, but that we can add to and, and build on. So list, a list of people here. This is the overall one. If you open a person here, I'll just show you how you can not see anybody's names and email addresses and stuff like this. So this is yours, which I can see from your Slack username. And there is a link to your Slack profile um, from here. So I can get in touch with you from the CRM. How did it and then it the, has, by the way, sorry? manual. Is that manual? The um, link? Yeah. At the moment, yes. OK, makes sense. But um, we were just talking about this yesterday, yesterday how we can uh, have a script connect with the Slack API and quite easily get those details. But it's because we have a, this two-step process on registration, once through the website and then to Slack, um, that at the moment we're manually importing details from uh, the database when people have signed up. Jack is working on a script to make this automatic and put it into the CRM. Then there's the process of setting up the skills. And then when they signed up to Slack, it also gets added onto the CRM. And really only then they're in the, in the anonymized roster because only then we can start Makes contacting sense. people. Yeah. So on the individual profile, there is the original information that people have provided when they signed up. We just made the executive decision that that is public, at least to the users of the CRM. Um, so here's what you put in originally. And from this information, we've, that's what we call curation. Uh, we've set up the skills in the, in the different categories here. Uh, so this is still a manual process, probably will stay a manual process. I'm sure something smart could be done here, but it would, be, uh, would involve a lot of work within vTiger and PHP. Yeah. And we, <laughs> don't seem to have very many people who are interested in doing that at the moment. And after this initial chunk of work, I don't think it will be too much work doing this going forward as well. Um, so yes, let's go back to the list and I'll show you what the idea is of one of this, you know, different ways of using it. But uh, what I've been doing, for example, for the um, literature review project, by the way, yeah. when I saw the spreadsheet that you created, I was like, oh, wow. Like, that was just like magical moment for me. Just so you understand, I had to spend like hours uh, doing that in my head and in the sheet to accomplish the same thing for different initiatives. Yeah, it, it's, still, <laughs> it's still a little bit tedious, but hopefully it should be a lot faster at least finding the people. I think still that part of, of reaching out to everybody. So yeah, yeah tell me how you, you done it. Like what, what was the process? Oops, what, what are we doing now? Um, so, I don't know why that restarted. Um, show me the roster. Cool. So for example, uh, what I haven't looked into yet is people who can do content marketing, content creation, reaching out, this kind of stuff. So here, what I would do is um, I'll go into the field and I go uh, just see all of marketing. Everybody is generally in marketing. And then I can see more details over here in, in operations communication, what type of area they're specifically in. So for example, here's somebody in content writing and editing. That's probably an interesting person. Um, some other people who have said they do marketing are maybe more on the SEO type of uh, side, so they probably not so much. So they, the idea is for this to get more granular as you kind of go over to the right. Yeah. Um, of course, not everybody has provided that. So there might just be some people who just said they, they're in marketing and they haven't really said anything further. But I think if we're specifically reaching out for people, then this helps seeing somebody who specifically said they do content writing of sorts. Um, and so then 
what I've done yesterday with this with this list is checking into their profiles and to see what was the original message that they provided, just to make sure that that's actually something that they're wanting to do. Um, and then checking on Slack if they're actually already engaged somewhere. So mm -hmm. the part we don't have in the CRM system right now is the teams. Um, this is the next part that we're setting up here that we have the teams in here and we can immediately see if somebody is already working in a team and we don't need to ask them if they want to be involved in a second one or a third one. Or yeah, we should we probably, can, and this is the thing that we've discussed some time uh, ago, we should like, obviously we don't want to limit people to join any teams. But mm. there is this aspect of being overwhelmed. And when people join 10 teams and 10 uh, Slack channels, they are overwhelmed. So kind of limiting yeah. that to three, I think, is a golden rule. Yeah. And also, I guess if we are going proactively messaging people and trying to engage them in projects, then at least first we should go for the people who haven't been in yeah. other projects i mean with some of them they are just like they're especially the medical professionals um or somebody with very niche specific skills probably they'll get pulled into all sorts of directions um but nlp for example we have like half of the community yeah. <laughs> doing nlp of some sort um so uh they're probably worthwhile like, approaching those who haven't found their project yet um so this is when you're, when you're looking for something very specific. And like I said, this can be really granular, obviously for the technical stuff. And we made it super granular, looking for specific libraries that people are learning with, uh, are working with. Um, this is, for example, when somebody posts in a help needed channel, then this very specific stuff might come up. Um, and for the AI people, a lot of them have provided this granular level information. It's more for the non-tech people where it get, gets yeah. broader. And, and I, I guess we'll be refining this as we go along. There's also some future plan of allowing people to review essentially their profiles here and add skills yeah. that we didn't initially put in and, um, and yeah, just refine it and take it from there. And how, like, so for example, you've assembled a team or like a team, a potential a list of people to contribute to a literature review team. And how do you uh, communicate with them through the, this? Yeah, so at the moment, I can just use this for finding people and then I still need to reach out to them separately. And mm. um, what we're looking in, into setting up now is, is the mail server. So we can actually use the CRM for sending bulk emails or individual emails to people directly. Um, Is there a feature in VTiger that does that? Yeah, so it has, um, probably need to, need to log out and log in as admin. Oh. Did it take the admin now or the test user? We'll see. Oh, no. Looks good. Uh, so it has like a whole mail manager, but this isn't set up at all. Mm. And then it has, let me just see. Oh yeah, it has these email templates. So I think Makes Shirley sense. has already played around with this a little bit where you can have your, like the onboarding email, for example, in here. And the really nice thing is then that not only can it do this and you can very easily bulk email people, uh, you can also do, um, you can also do automated workflows. Mm. So you so if create. someone doesn't join Slack or things like that, we can follow up. Yeah, exactly. And when a new, new user gets added to the CRM, they automatically get sent the onboarding email. That's cool. So this, the workflows are, are super cool. I've played around with them a little bit. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that can be done. It also has web forms that I haven't tried out at all. 
So it, it has all sorts of things um, that we could start playing around with. Cool. But I think the next, the next thing that will happen here is definitely the, the projects and the teams. Um, so we can also maybe start using this for sending out the regular uh, updates there. We were just in the uh, in the daily call. We were just talking about, for example, what could be done um, quite easily is set up a list of only the medical professionals that have signed up that are probably mm -hmm. not active every day on Slack, um, and send them regular updates on the projects and the needs that we have specifically from the medical community. That would be amazing because all the like I occasionally send emails, but those are like giant emails and they're. Mm -hmm thousand people and it's impossible to speak the you know the same needs and the same even words and and the angles so it would be great to create these like very targeted uh, updates exactly and because we now can very easily create new subsets of people in here that whole part of having to manually put those together in the uh, google suite um that falls away we just need to connect it with um with a mail server here and test it out a little bit but the functionality is all there yeah makes sense and right. i mean I it, has, it has a lot more it has like wiki and document storage and all of that <laughs> and we'll see which which one of that like which one of these parts will be useful in yeah. the future but yet to be for uncovered. Now, hmm? yet to be uncovered yeah, absolutely. But for now, I think the focus for us is to use it to more quickly find the right people that we're looking for. To use it for re-engaging with um, all of those people who are not active on Slack anymore and see if we can identify them and send out some emails and some updates and, uh, and some specific uh, project needs and projects where they might fit and try yeah. and get them uh, engaged again. Makes sense. All right. Yeah. Well, this so, this looks amazing. Uh, I have to jump on another call in four minutes, yeah. but I feel that you know I got a general overview of things, and we'll probably. Um, well, quick question: uh, When do you plan to to reach out to those uh, potential contributors to literature review planning? Uh, I already started. Oh, nice. um, to reach out to the ones that could be coordinators. Um, I've done that via Slack today to see first those who are still active there. And um, then I have to figure out how to reach out to them via email because, I mean, if I do that for my private email, I don't know how. Uh, you can <laughs> um, use the team at uh, coronawai.org. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I've used that to send the help needed emails. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that should be the next step because a few of them I saw have signed up quite early and I haven't found any public messages on Slack, so they probably haven't been yeah. active, but maybe they're still interested and available. Yeah. Um, All right, that sounds yeah. like a plan. Then let's touch base sometime uh, you know, this week on the, the progress or just uh, let us know asynchronously on on the updates and if you need any any more help to kind of activate those coordinators also let us know and we may assemble the temporary coordination team to to do this. yeah i mean for now i guess uh, if i if i hear back i'll send them to the slack channel and and hopefully they'll engage directly there and then they can also help me find the other people yep, yep. <laughs> that's that it's a that's fractal. my hope um, to do it that way yeah yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much for, for the overview. I'll post it uh, in a bit in Slack. And I'm sure there will be lots of people that will be equally excited. Cool. All right. Sounds good. All right. Have a good Bye. Day.